It's David Wowie from Another Eden Adventures. How you doing? Daily routines with Another Eden. There are thousands, millions, gazillions of things you can do in Another Eden. It's such a massive game. Where do you start? Well, it depends on what you want. I did a quick guide for you for some daily things you can do to increase your chronostones which helps you unlock more characters get more character upgrades or even unlock free characters find the best weapons armor and equipment in the game and get the best graster that gives the best bang for your buck once again don't forget to like and subscribe to help this community grow and if this helps you in any way and you're feeling a bit generous don't forget to donate a thanks. Thank you so much, by the way, to the anonymous people who have already donated thanks. It means a lot. I don't know who you are, so I can't chat you out, but thank you so much. All right. All right. The first thing I would do if I wanted to unlock more chronostones, and it's probably the easiest thing you can do, is log in daily. So when you log in daily, you'll automatically get 20 chronostones. And sometimes this increases if there's a current campaign running. But as of now, you get 20 chronostones just for logging in. And then if you go tap on menu and then look at the top left of the screen, you just have to watch five ads and then you'll get either five to 20 chronostones, one green key or one red key each time you watch the ad. I'm currently on a paid subscription plan, by the way, so I can skip these ads. By the way, I have a video guide on whether you should sign up to the subscription plan or not check it out in my links in the description after this video but usually i kind of miss watching the ads especially the state of survival ads what i do is i'd run an ad and then i'd do some house chores or do some extra work you know make a sandwich wash the dishes think about life so that's the first thing you can do to get chronostones but that's not all the free chronostones you can get right away the next thing you can do is you tap on menu and you tap on the top right of the screen where you can see the amount of chronostones you currently have see where i have see that little plus sign here tap on that and then you can tap earn 10 chronostones just for watching a commercial so you can watch a commercial again and get another free 10 chronostones the next thing you can do to get free chronostones is watch out for current running campaigns so you tap on menu then you tap notices and you scroll down a little bit and you see campaign information here this little icon with the cat with a red bandana you tap on that and it will show you what current campaign the game is running so currently we have a catch-up campaign to help us get in sync with the japanese version of the game and there are a bunch of different bonuses and giveaways that they have something sometimes it includes chronostone style giveaways Another thing you can do daily to get more chronostones as well as get some pretty amazing new badges, equipment and items is to farm through Sebastia's lab aka the battle simulator which is available if you finish part one of the main story. So just as a reminder you go to the future time layer, you go to Elzion and you go to Sebastia's lab. From here you can do a bunch of different trials. And, each, and through each of these trials, you get a bunch of rewards. So for example, clear state, you get, for this particular stage, you get 30 chronostones just by finishing it. And if you finish all these other tasks they give you, you get more chronostones plus badges and you even get a chance script. Obviously, from this bit, you can see that I haven't done it yet. So that's the Bastion's lab. Another way to get some really quick and easy chronostones is to tap on menu and to tap on records. Because simply through playing the game and doing a bunch of stuff, you'll most likely get rewarded a number of chronostones. And you can see what you've received, then tap on awards. As you can see here, I actually have a bunch of rewards I can receive. So for example, I just accomplished this encounter with Steel Seeker, which gives me five chronostones. And there are a bunch of different awards right here. So that's another easy way you can get chronostones. In fact, this record section is a fantastic way to see where you are in the game and which parts you haven't unlocked yet. So for example, if we tap on episodes, you'll see the various episodes in the game that either have been completed or haven't been completed yet. And then same thing for symphony, you can see the various symphonies in the game that you've either cleared or haven't cleared yet. But there's even more. So let's see this Crown of the Pale Dawn symphony. Let's tap on that. 
As you can see here, it says Dream Pedals Held, 133,731. If you tap on Details and scroll down and you tap on Dream Pedal Rewards, you'll see the more Dream pedal Pedals you collect from this symphony, the more awards, including Chronostones, you'll be able to get. So for example, just by getting 3,000 Dream Pedals, sorry, 8,600 Dream Pedals, you'll get 20 Chronostones and so forth. And you keep going down the list until you even get a chance script by getting 468,000 dream pedals. So just looking through the symphony, you can see, for example, it's the same same system for the other symphonies. In this complex dream symphony, I've unlocked 196,450 of these star things, but I'm sure the more I get, the more chronostones I'll be able to receive. While we're talking about symphony and episodes, if you haven't finished the main story yet, I highly recommend chipping away at the main story every day because it's through the main story that you'll unlock most of the extra features in the game. Plus you'll also unlock a bunch of chronostones and even free characters while you're at it. So to see where you are in the main story, see this main menu at the bottom left, tap quests and tap on this green icon here, main story. If I've tapped on with truth in hand, I'm actually at the end of the main story, so I have nowhere else to go. But if you haven't finished chapter 93 yet, up, if you haven't reached chapter 93 yet, it would direct you where you need to go. Playing through a main story also unlocks another dungeon, which is a key feature in your daily grinding, which I'll talk about later. By the way, one thing I forgot to mention about Sebastian's lab is that you only have a limited number of turns you can use per day. See at the bottom of the screen where it says held bold pulses? As you can see here, there's only a limited number of pulses you, I can use every day. So it is a good worthwhile daily grind and just use up those bold pulses to get their daily rewards. Another way to unlock Chronostones and other rewards is through the Astral Archives, which you can unlock after clearing chapter 11 of the main story. I've actually created a guide for that, which I've linked in the description. So what you do is you tap on Tomes and here you go, Astral Archives, baby. You just tap on each one to finish the certain tasks they give you. As you can see, I've finished this book of Synthodrone, but I haven't done the challenges whatsoever. So once you finish the tomes, you also get a series of challenges where you can fight bosses, and the more points you get, the more rewards you get. And as the game progresses, more and more tomes will be unlocked. You can even unlock the sidekick Pissy. Check my guide for more information. While we're here, you can also visit the Cradle of Time. You don't necessarily get chronostones by playing this every day, but you do get a number of awards. The next thing you can do on the daily is obviously finish your character side quests. To see what side quests you have remaining, tap on quests in the main menu, then go to character quests or sub quests to see what's left. As you can see, I have a crap load of stuff I haven't done yet. Another way to see your character side quests is to tap on the character themselves. So for example, we'll tap on uh, Mistrari, AS, tap on quest, and from here you can actually see which quests you've done. Obviously, I've finished all of hers, but if you haven't finished them, you'll see a number of quests you still need to do. And it, what's interesting is if you if you go back to the quest section, you can also see other quests from other episodes and symphonies that you still need to do. So for example, if I tap on Mythos, oh, look at that. I actually still have a little side quest I haven't finished yet. There you go. You can use the same thing for other symphonies and episodes we haven't completed. So as well as going through the quests, section in the menu you can also go through the record section which we went through earlier so if you tap on symphony see how i have cleared at the top right of each one if you haven't finished one of these it won't have the word cleared at the top right and what if you're on the paid subscription being on either or both of the paid subscriptions gives you a number of chronostones and other bonuses that you can use every month so if you tap on records again tap on awards and then tap on trial still connecting if you tap on trial you'll see as a subscriber you'll see a number of tasks you have to do in return for rewards so if you're on the more expensive subscription you'll have these tasks with a little blue and yellow icons next to them if you're in the first tier level of paid subscription you'll see the the ground tasks 
Trials of a Warrior, for example, Grand Trials of a Warrior, where here it says, win 25 battles and you'll, in return you'll get 15 chronostones. And this God of Heaven subscription I'm on, you'll get 10 light or shadow points to the character of your choice by completing, uh, clearing the other lands, El Zion region. So either of these trials do give you a number of chronostones or other item benefits. And if you're thinking about farming Gil on a day-to-day -day basis, which you really, like if you've played the game long enough, you really shouldn't need to farm Gil. But if you're into it, I don't know why. You can go to the Sealed Realm and go to eph Ephemeral Time Space where you can defeat a bunch of bad guys, get a bunch of Gil. But if you just play through the game, man, you will eventually just accumulate a whole stack of Gil. If only it was that easy in real life, right? So now let's talk about characters. There are things you can do every day to either upgrade your characters or unlock new free characters. So let's talk about unlocking free characters first. There's number, like pretty much most sympathies and episodes and extra side content you will play in this game will unlock a free character. Even if you play through the main quest, you'll be able to unlock numerous free characters for your party. Playing through the latest part of the main story obviously will get you Ash Tear. And if you play through the latest Apocrypha series, you'll be able to unlock non-AES, Noxus and Noxus AES, who are pretty reasonable characters. And second to that, if you wanted to unlock some pretty decent free characters, you can then try playing through the second Tales of Symphony side quests, which will unlock a number of Tales of characters were pretty great and obviously the complex dream collaboration where you can unlock the chrono cross characters kid surge and harley and the little blue guy what's his name what's his face sparky the creepy one it may also be worth playing through complex dream because it is the only collab so far that has an expiry date i also forgot to mention to check your inbox because a lot of the rewards or campaign bonuses do come straight to your inbox they don't actually automatically go to your chronostones number count that should go to your inbox as you can see here there are a bunch of messages i still haven't opened 50 chronostones look at that all right if you have more time on your hands and you want to unlock the five star versions of a lot of the four and a half star characters you pull in a lot of the banner pulls. What you want to do is you want to run through and finish the ensemble series. With Little Princess, Little Big Adventure, you can unlock the five star version of Miyu. So you need to have finished chapter 13 of the game and you need to have finished Miyu's second character quest. Then you need to go to Miglant's Castle Royal Chambers to start this ensemble. Then we have the Foreign Scars and Ship to Freedom Ensemble where you can unlock Ciel, the five star version of her that is. To start this ensemble you need to have completed chapter 20 of the main story as well as Ciel's second character quest. Then go to El Zion Gamma District to follow the prompts and once you finish this you get Ciel's five star. Next ensemble is probably one of my favorite ensembles which is the Heroes of Bygone Days and Engraved Oath. You need to have finished chapter 25 of the main story and with this, once you finish this ensemble you get the 5 star version of May. I like this because you see Aldo and Gang when they were kids and it kind of, kind of reminds me of a 90s Stephen King type of horror type of short story and, and I really enjoyed it. And the latest ensemble, Commander and Sheep lets you unlock the 5 star Benedict. You need to have finished chapter 13 of the main story and then start at Unigan and follow the prompts to finish this and you'll get Benedict. I actually have a short guide on how to get him so check that out. There are also a lot of other free characters that are worth mentioning such as Garyu, Serene, Azami as well as their corresponding AS quests. They're still up to date today, they haven't been overly power crept. Look up guides on how to get them on the Another Eden wiki. And if you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're feeling generous, don't forget to donate a thanks man. Another good free character to unlock is Aisha. I did a free guide on her on how to get her too. So she is a great fire and water support unit. 
Another unit that is power crept but is still interesting anyway is Straw Boy. So Straw Boy is a completely free unit that you get from completing chapter 58 of the main story. The interesting thing about Straw Boy is once he reaches level 80, you can actually resurrect him from the dead and not from the dead, but you can actually bring him back to life in an interesting way. And he gets one new light point each time you resurrect him. So once you resurrect him, he starts at level one. And each time you resurrect him, you get him one extra light point. So you eventually build him up to 255 light points. And each time you level him up, you can actually choose what kind of elemental user he will be i'm hoping he gets some kind of upgrade in the future because he is power crept now but we'll see what happens to him in the future another thing you can also do is fishing do you need a whole guy to go to fishing so just look it up on the another eden wiki but essentially once you've fished enough you'll unlock the free character levia and you can also get Levia another style, though both of them arguably, you know, are powercraft by a lot of the characters today. But still, it, if you're a completionist and you want these free five-star characters, go ahead, man. And if you've got a lot of time on your hands, do it. I haven't done it myself personally. Another thing you can do is upgrade your existing four and a half star characters to five stars. So how do you do this? Let's say you have a the four and a half star unit of Sesta and want to make her a five star character to really unlock her full potential. You look her up on the Another Eden Wiki. See where I'm here? What you do is you scroll down and you see that little table here where it shows the rarity and the star level. If you scroll down to the fifth row, you'll see five star. Then you'll see Fenrir. So you click on this and you'll see you'll need one Fenrir Tome to help unlock her five star as well as a number of other items I mentioned earlier But the main one you want to farm for is the Fenrir Tome and if you tap if you look here in this table You can see it's obtained from another dungeon Industrially Ruins Essentially you need to keep playing through another dungeon Industrial Ruins until you pull the Fenrir Tome at the end of until the end of the dungeon and it is, there's, it's a, there's a gacha component to it so you won't always get it at the end of each term as you can see here you have there's an average 2.8 chance of unlocking it so good luck mate another thing you can do daily to really upgrade your characters is to increase their light and shadow points so for the gacha characters the only real way to increase their light and shadow points is through finding light and shadow uh, items like such as guiding light katana or pulling the same character in a banner pool. But for free characters, you can actually increase their light or shadow points by completing dungeons. I did a complete guide to this, so check it out after watching this video. This also includes a mention of Toto Theater World, which a lot of people use to increase the light or shadow points of a lot of their characters. The next thing you can do every day is to work on building up or obtaining the true manifest version of your character's weapons. So to find out which characters of yours still need a true manifest unlock, go to menu, go to records, go to catalog, and then go to manifestation. So this is the list of characters I've unlocked the true manifest for and the characters I still haven't even started or still need to unlock. So for example, I've gotten, I've gotten Mighty's true manifest but I still need to unlock Shigura's True Manifest, for example. Another thing you can do daily is to farm for experience points. So my favorite way to build up or level up my characters is to go to the Sealed Realm, sealed realm Transitory Time Space Dungeon. I did a whole video of that. A lot of other people like to fight Cyrus in Sebastian's lab. I'll link to the video comparing the two in my description. The challenge with both these ways though is they they require either red or green keys or bold pulses. So you're limited to the number of times you can do them per day. A newer way that people are using to get more experience points and thanks to Best Boy for reminding me about this is the phase shift which unlocks through part three of the main story. So essentially you find these things called phase shifts within the holo time layer. In these phase shifts, you fight some pretty difficult enemies which give you a whole bunch of experience points. My only gripe with phase shifts is that you typically need one or a handful of really good units to carry 
everyone else you're trying to level up. Compared to the transitory time space dungeon where you can have 5 level 1 completely new units and just one other strong level 80 unit like Flamelopus who can carry everyone else. And because of this I personally think you can level up more characters at a faster pace. But once you reach endgame the number of high class scrolls you receive are so abundant so that you can essentially just level up characters using high class scrolls. See this? I have 999 plus, I can just keep level characters if I want to. There are also a number of Grasta items and equipment you can get that increase your experience points. Speaking of weapons and equipment, another thing you can do daily is grind through everyone's favorite grinding through a placey time twisted maze which is an Arat maze village which you can unlock as part of playing Apocrypha. I did a whole guide on Oparts which talks about the awesome weapons equipment and equipment you can get from Twisted Maze and when you trade the items you unlock from there so check that out but essentially you can get a bunch of some of the strongest weapons and armor in the game from this. What's even better is you can even get some of the strongest weapons and armor in the game that you can equip with level 1 characters which is crazy man. The next thing you want to start aiming for is if you've reached the main story part 3 of the game is search for the Elpis weapons we can, which you can essentially unlock by playing the Bounty Hunter missions. It's a huge journey to get them <coughs> and I highly recommend using o parts to get stronger weapons first but the Elpis weapons are pretty satisfying to unlock so you can also aim for them. And as a reminder of another thing you can work in daily is have you beat all the Ukwajis yet? Have you unlocked Ukwaji and have you got the Ukwaji weapons and armor set yet? You can smash him daily to eventually unlock all the weapons and armor. As you can see, I think I have one left. I can probably do that now. And last but not least, in terms of weapons you, that may be interesting that you can unlock, special shout out to Best Boy for suggesting these are the Lunar weapons, which you can unlock from the Zerbeya continent. And if you play through the City of Lost Paradise, you will get the equipment needed for the Lunar Equipment. So why should you get the Lunar Equipment? Well, whoever equips a Lunar Weapon gets plus 30 speed. So plus 30 speed is exceptional, especially if you're using another force. It gives you more attacks during another force. It also helps you, let's say you have a buff you want to give to your team before another unit attacks the more speed you have obviously the more chances you'll be able to give that buff before that next team member does his attack so the way you but what you need to do is you need to upgrade these weapons so another thing you can do on the daily is work on upgrading the weapons which you can upgrade in no power Porium. so these are special uh kind of like boss level weapons and armor that you can upgrade if you find certain materials. So as you can see here, I still need to upgrade my own Lunar stuff and I can get the items to upgrade them from City of Lost Paradise as well as Paradise Full Moon Cannon. And last but not least, the next thing you can work on every day is building up your Grasta. As we all know, Grasta is one of the key items or equipment you can have in the game to really help you win. Most of the YouTubers you see beating those bosses in one or two turns is because they have Grasta equipped. I did a whole Grasta guide which I'll link in my description or you just search for it another Eden Adventures Grasta guide. Essentially I like to focus on three places when farming for Grasta. And shout out to Best Boy for clarifying why you should focus on these three places. Essentially I'll just run through them and just pick up a bunch of grass but he knows <laughs> he told me specifically why they're important so if you run through the present Garalay continent you get a bunch of offensive shareable grasta as well as the ever so popular enhanced when max hp grasta as well as tier 3 level elemental grasta so what do i mean by shareable grasta so the, the good thing about shareable grasta is that if one person equips it benefits of that charitable grasta is shared with other team members who have the same weapon equipped so some examples of some grass you can get from the present garrelay continent are 
power of sorcerer of mind which increases the critical rate of all spells by 40 percent and if you upgrade it you get an increase in 25 percent to your type attacks another example that's shareable is damage plus 30 percent when hp is max when you upgrade it that's when it becomes shareable for anyone else holding that weapon so for example if you have a staff everyone else with staff gets plus 30 percent when their hp is max also when playing through present girl the continent gives you a chance of getting a light point for the free character azami next if you want to get the very popular pain and poison grasser which most players use then you can run through antiquity garalea continent and thanks for best boy for this you can also get proficiency resistance graster as well as the elemental skill grasters for example water piercing graster for bow users so they can use a water pierce skill plus playing through this gives you a chance of getting a an extra shadow point for the free character garyu next you can run through my favorite future garalea continent where you can unlock light points for serene as well as enchantment ores as well as pain grasser but apparently they're rarer than getting pain grasser from the antiquity garalea continent next place you can look at is underworld so in underworld you can find more enchantment ores and the more you play the more secrets you can unlock so from this dungeon you can drop get bullseye and combo rate ores unlike from future garrelay continent underworld also has the rust skill grasses that when equipped give you a decent strong earth attacks this is also a somewhat free pain grass and when upgraded with a dormant ore. playing through underworld also gives you a chance of getting a shadow point for all the free character alterna who desperately needs an upgrade hopefully in the next main story we'll see her upgraded while playing through the game, you can also do the impossible task of getting ca each character's true VC grasses. Once again, check out my grasser guide for more information on what true grasses are. But it is a long and arduous journey where you have to repeat dungeons several times in a row. But hey man, if you've got time, no one's stopping you. But that's not the end of it. So what you I would recommend is you go to the Another Eden unofficial wiki, go to the Grasser Guide, which I've linked in this description, and look and work your way down the tier three Gastra and start unlocking and obtaining each one. 